Welcome to day 34 of our study through the Bible in community here on YouTube. We're going to be in Genesis 27 today, and if you want to join up at day one, you can do so through the cards or the description down below. Look for the playlist, Study Through the Bible. We are people of the free gift where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. And so if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos studying the Bible in community here on YouTube. And so let's get into yesterday's assignment, day 34, Genesis, read Genesis 27, and mark every occurrence of the word bless and its synonyms. Carefully observe the actions of Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau. Also note the differences in their individual blessings. So I'm going to share with you uh, my insights that I gleaned from Genesis 27. And so in verses 5 through 16, we see Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau's son, Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I'll make them savory meat for your father, such as he loves. Now shall bring it to your father, that he may eat, and that he may bless you before his death. Upon me be your curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch them. Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. She put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So here's what's going on is that Isaac, he's getting old. He knows that he's getting old, and he knows that he's going to die soon. So he privately, or he thought it was privately, he calls Esau, the son that he favored. And we talked about how that's never a good idea to favor a son over another as a parent. But that's exactly what Isaac had done. And not only that, but he was favoring the wrong son. At least according to God, God said that the birthright, the blessing, the messianic line, the child of promise was going to be Jacob. The older is going to serve the younger. God said that, but now Isaac's taking matters into his own hands. And he calls Esau and he says, I want you to go out and um, I want you to kill me an animal and make me stew and bring it back here. And when you do, I want to bless you before I die. So Esau goes on his task, and little did Isaac know, Rebekah was listening in, and she calls Jacob, the son that she favors, and says, here's the plan, here's what your father's trying to do. While Esau's gone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix up some stew out of the same kind of meat that uh, you know Isaac wants, and then Jacob brings up, like, but I, I don't even feel or smell or look the same as my brother. And so uh, you remember Esau's name is Harry. Uh, his name means Harry. But he also he gets his name changed to Edom because he was red. He apparently was a very red, hairy guy. Like we talked about, like the man's man, right? He's out the hunt, hunting. He's huge. He's, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so that's why Isaac favors him, okay? Now, uh, so he's going out trying to do this. And then uh, Jacob, uh, Rebecca says to Jacob, I'm going to get some of the, the clothes uh, of your brother's clothes and some fur. She puts some fur, some actual fur on him so that he feels as hairy as his brother. That's how hairy Esau is. And so the whole scheme, like she kind of like puts like the smell on him. She puts the feel on him. She puts the meat in his hands and even like uh, trying to get him to do this. And so Jacob goes along with it. And here's what happens. Genesis 17, 19, Jacob said unto his father, I'm Esau, your firstborn. Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray you, that I may feel you, my son, whether you be my very son, Esau, or not. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands are of Esau. And he discerned him not, so he blessed him. And are you my very son? And even after he blesses him, he says, are you my very son, Esau? And he said, I am. And so... Jacob, or Isaac, knows something is up. 
Okay, he he can sense that something's up. He's like, you feel like Esau, but you sound like Jacob. And are you sure you're my son? Now, what kind of relationship does this family have that he suspects that they're going to do this? Are they just all habitually lying to one another uh, and just backstabbing one another and playing favorites with one another. It kind of seems like they were. But Jacob uh, has so many opportunities, and so does Rebecca, to just say, look, you know, the jig's up. Let's confess. Let's tell him what we're doing. But more importantly, let's tell him why we're doing it, okay? Because it wasn't just a matter of Rebecca wanting Jacob to have the blessing and Isaac wanting Esau to have the blessing. God already spoke up on the matter. It doesn't matter that Esau is the firstborn. The older is going to serve the younger. The blessing, the birthright, and all this drama, it already was declared by God. I, Jacob is going to be the seed of promise. He's going to be the one through whom the Messiah comes. So you better pay attention to that. And in spite of Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob scheming, it all ends up happening the way that it was supposed to. That is the grace of God. As you see behind me, the story of scandalous grace, the life of Jacob. You can't find a better title than that. And so, verse 27, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God gives you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. And let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone that curses you and blessed be he that blesses you. Here's the interesting thing is that they did all these con this conniving to get Jacob the blessing, but the blessing doesn't match Jacob at all. It doesn't match him at all. It matches Esau. The whole thing is about like nature and, you know, the blessings of the dew of heaven and all of this stuff and, and the field and none of it fits Jacob. This is what happens when you try to take on the role that God has given to another and you don't be, and you aren't satisfied with what God has given you, the gifts that he's given you, the personality he's given you, the, the gifts that he's given you. When you aren't satisfied with that and you are always looking and you're envious and you're jealous and you're coveting all the things that are around you and all the things, all the people that are doing this and that and the other and you're like, oh, that sounds so cool and I wish that I could do that and I wish I could have that following and I wish I could, you know, you know, be in that place or I, I wish that I could have that success. That is vanity, okay? And, you know, nobody got that. Nobody got that you just, you know, do what Abraham did. He believed God and was counted to him for righteousness. These guys don't even believe God. They don't trust God. They don't follow God. But God, just in spite of all of their mess, all of their dysfunction, all of their lying and scheming and conniving, he chooses to bless them. And it is amazing, amazing, the grace of our God. And so let's go ahead and moving on. And in verse 33, And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Where is he that has taken your venison and, and brought it to me? And I have blessed him, yea, and he shall be blessed. Your brother came with subtlety and has taken away your blessing. Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And so, you know, jigs up. Esau comes home after Isaac has already blessed Jacob. After everything's said and done, Esau comes to the door. And, you know, Isaac's like me, like, what? what? Who are you? Oh, my gosh, what have I done? And I've already blessed him. And, you know, Esau's begging him, you know, like, don't you have a blessing for me, Father? You know, and he's just, like, seething mad because now... Jacob has tricked him twice. He got the birthright out of him for a bowl of stew. And now with another bowl of stew, he stole the blessing 
that was supposed to be his. But it wasn't supposed to be his, was it? Anyway, Esau is just seething mad. And so, verse 37, Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him your lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. With corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto you, my son? Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above, and by the sword you shall live. You shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass that when you shall have the dominion, that you shall break his yoke from off your neck." And Esau says, sooner rather than later, it's on, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. And so uh, Rebecca comes into, uh, the, and it says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebecca, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Flee to Laban, my brother, to Herod. Okay, so I this doesn't play out good. When you don't trust God, there are consequences. And But in spite of you not trusting him, his grace seems to be greater than all of our sin. And that is no I, better illustrated than the life of Jacob. I mean, there's very few people who were just so intentionally were conniving and uh, manipulative, and yet God loved Jacob. He blessed Jacob. He chose Jacob, and that gives us a lot of encouragement uh, in our own personal lives. So if you have insights or questions that I did not cover today, put them in the comments below, and I'll be choosing some of those for the weekly Q&A at the end of the week. And if you haven't already, uh, no, let's go ahead. Day 35. Uh, is the discussion question. So you're going to reread Genesis 25, 23 through 24, or actually store in your heart, meaning memorize Genesis 25, 23 through 24, and Hebrews 12, 15 through 16. And read and discuss Genesis 25, 27 through 34, and Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and 14 through 17. So here's some questions to reflect on and ponder on. What have you learned about Jacob and Esau this week? And what is the birthright? Look up Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17. And why was it important? How did Esau treat his birthright? And what does this tell us about Esau? What is your birthright as a child of God? And how do you treat it? And why? And so, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And give us a thumbs up on this video if you like the content for today. Share this video with others in your life who want to study the Bible but haven't had success in it. Give them the resources they need. Get them the answers to their questions. Let's do it in community here on YouTube. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.